What a lovely day. And, oh, hello there. That is a new surprise. This of us. Hey guys, my name's Tom. Welcome back to another tech review. Today, we're reviewing something what is more of a unique and very rare aircraft. Right in front of us is the Workspace Technologies Boeing 777 Freighter. Now this 777 Freighter is literally one of the most unique and rare aircrafts. And why? Well, not a lot of 777 Freighters have been built into ROAF, because due to the extremely low demands, only a few 777 Freighters came to existence. And Workspace Technologies built us this aircraft. Now it is under, and this is the livery done by me, which I painted the Silkway West Boeing 777-300ER livery, which designed the funny and cool tail patterns, which you guys can like here from the tail patterns of the geometric shapes. And this airplane was actually the first Silkway West Airlines 777 freighter out of six of them they ordered. Well, two already delivered, but four more needed to be taken up. And yeah, let's tour inside of this beautiful behemoth. The modeling itself was beautiful, and there isn't like a lot of like crazy details. And the cargo door looks real. The cargo hold looks really nice as well. Considering this, it's very high on some parts. So if you're using a ULD and something, you might want to. I think I wish like the suspension may get a little lower, but you know, if the ULD can go that high for the cargo, I wouldn't be surprised. So yeah, let's get on in. The aircraft is the interior and also the cabin seats. The most common is the cargo area, and there's a seatbelt sign. And of course, there's also multiple jump seats for people to settle down, a galley, and, you know, the toilet. So let's get into the flight deck of this massive several ton airliner. So, of course, I'm gonna unfly. This airplane is still a little wobbly because, you know, there's no, there's like, no, like, a system. And usually when it anchors, it's still gonna try to wobble around and back and forth. So, yeah. If I use a wobbling, it's... Now it's stopped anchoring, I think. Yeah, it's still gonna move around a tiny bit. So usually I wish like they could maybe make the wobbling a little bit less. So it looks a little nice. Alright. Let's start. Alright, to so make sure it's fair, I'm gonna keep the engine on. I'm gonna start the engine. And the aircraft looks like both of them using the general electric GE 1A. You can also use this, gonna open multiple cargo doors. I'm gonna open both the main and the rear. That both cargo doors are opening. The first one is booted up and nice. Then I'm going to close both of those cargo doors. That now, so you can also open the nose for the radar. Or you want to check the radar. You can also test the radar, and it does that. So, yeah, it's a really nice little tool right here for the Subway West Trip 7. I can stop the test, and then you can close the nose. Of course, you can also set the flaps. So I'm going to do set flaps 15, we use it for takeoff flaps. And you can actually reset the flaps, and trim as well. Alright, let's get into the flight deck and operate this behemoth of an aircraft. So now in flight, I basically rendered the airplane from going bananas. What we got to do is double click the anchor so it can de-anchor this massive airliner. Now. Let's get going. Engine on. Let's taxi this big aircraft. You see there, the both wing motion does flip up, but it also goes down to hence the aircraft's low speed. So it's a kind of a nice little 777 aircraft. So what I'm going to do is taxi the airplane to the runway, and then we can see how much performance it's going to do. The sound is really good, though. Right now, I'm going low volume. Hold on. Crank the codec back up. I actually reinstalled Windows, which ended up reinstalling the Razor Blades codec after a while. The stall speed, do not look at this, that's fake. Because on the stall speed, I actually reconfigured it to 160, so it's easier to me to really work it out. It's actually common for most planes to be 160 for rotations and stuff. Now, what I do is get the plane to line up, and then, then we're gonna push the acceleration on this massive freight aircraft as well. So right now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys a photo. I'm gonna do is you can get, since I actually changed the key by, the plane looks a lot cooler with like the usual liveries. And yeah, I actually was supposed to finish up painting the plane, but you know I was a little lazy, so I completed the job a little early. But overall, it looks really nice. 
and it is a pretty nice aircraft as well. And the use of PBR makes it really cool. Let's get a good photo of like this. There we go. This is for the thumbnail, actually. Alright, now let's keep continuing taxiing. About 15 knots, and I'm gonna go 25 knots at taxi speed. Now we're just gonna go. A little bit of a jet stream going now, but that's usually common when the aircraft goes a little faster. So let's give the aircraft a little bit of a speed. Speed boost, going 70 knots on a taxi speed. On a Boeing 777, so let's get going. The airplane does wobble around, so it's really just has some pretty good. has a little bit of suspension as well, so I usually use a. Our suspension to operate this aircraft. I think the suspension really needs to be a little lower, so like it's gonna be like not too like not too high, so this way it's easier for cargo equipment and and staircase can load it up properly. Since we're gonna line up and see the performance of this trip, so 160 rotate, baby. There we go. Four knots. 50s. And crank the power to max. See, the engine's gonna roar, which is kinda nice. And now it's gonna get move the airplane to line up the center line. It's gonna take only 160 knots for rotation, so. One thirty eight, one forty four, sixty. Oh, that is a glitch. It rarely does that. During rotation, the plane would do that on the taxiway. I like the seven four seven; doesn't do like this, but a triple seven it randomly does. So usually, the plane would have like it randomly does like that. So not really a surprise. This airplane does tend to wobble and do like that. Let's see how much faster we're going. Triple Seven's climbing out. I'm gonna take a photo of it while in the air. The flight characteristics is not bad. I actually like the characteristics of flying this Triple Seven. It's a little more agile as well. And I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna try to do this flight a little bit away, so I'm gonna take a nice photo while it's in the air. I'm gonna do this anchor. So. It's yeah, well, anchoring it does shut the chocks, but you can also disarm the chocks in uh, studio. So yeah, All right, I'm gonna do reduce the power. I right, no, enough fun. Let's get her. I think we only slowed her a little bit, so I'm gonna do is turn the aircraft back to the runway. So I'm gonna turn her out. I'm using a little bit of a st steep turn, but the triple seven is a lot more maneuverable compared to the bigger bones of 7400. Now compared to this, the plane is for free, but there's still going to be a bit of like, you know, no notable issues flying this massive jet. So what I'm going to do is decrease power to 36%, and I'm going to try to land a crossbow. There we go. What I'm going to do is literally, the plane kit in itself is Skytech, but you know, once you get used to it, it's nothing too surprising. And randomly the flaps just pull back up to the aircraft. Hmm. Yeah, it really does that during the rotation part. <laughs> Here we go. Try to do is line the triple seven up for a runway. What I do is, yeah, I think I need to change that to remove the chocks because it looks a little hideous onto this beautiful aircraft. There we go. Seven, eight knots. Yeah, the power control is going to be odd because the throttle needs to be a little bit lower. So I might have to decrease the throttle control. The guns are approaching in using a simple wedge west triple seven. Let's see if I can butter this. There we 
to go. And usually muscle freighter aircraft don't really not, but I just like it a little smooth. So here we go. Here we go. Oh. I forgot I put the power back up, so that's a very bad landing. Compared to most landings, I would say once you land, you just gotta keep the throttle up. So it's a physics-based kit as well, so I didn't expect that one coming out. And yeah, we're decelerating nicely to the middle point, and yeah. It does have active suspension, nice. Alright. So we're now stopped at the gate. So so what did I think about the Sipway West Boeing 777 aircraft? Well, it's a very nice design model with good PBR textures and great systems. But although the plane is a little bit funny when taking off, and you you notice that it is a little bit hard as well, and the throttle needs to be recalibrated a bit. But overall, the aircraft is a very solid alternative. If anyone really wants a cargo aircraft as well. And considering that it's only free and it's really good in the package, I would say just a small tweak of an update can just really make the 777 as legendary as the Boeing 747. So my overall score for this 777 is 9 out of 10. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you do enjoy it. Thank and sorry for the previous what's going on happened yesterday. You know, I was a bit concerned, but now I'm back. Yes, Triple Seven review is coming right now. And yes, thank you. Check out Workspace Technologies. Link in the description. Subscribe for more. See ya.